Circulatory systems allow for bulk transport of gas, nutrients, waste, water, hormones and immune cells, allowing for crucial cellular functions to take place. To begin understanding the circulatory system, it is important to know what type it is. There are two options, as circulatory systems can either be open or closed systems. Closed circulatory systems are made up of vessels which blood is pumped through. The blood never leaves the vessels, but small molecules diffuse in and out of small vessels such as capillaries. Insects have an open circulatory system. This involves a medium being pumped into cavities in the body tissue, known as haemocell, before being collected and returned to the pump by either veins or pores, known as ostia. This is also seen in all arthropods and some mollusks. There are three primary components that make up insect circulatory systems. The haemocell, an internal body cavity, the haemolymph, the medium or fluid somewhat analogous to blood, and the dorsal vessel, the primary pumping organ that helps drive the movement of haemolymph within the haemocell. The haemocell refers to the internal and continuous open cavity typically spanning the length of the insect. This space contains the insect's vital organs and is filled with haemolymph. The haemocell itself is divided into three regions known as sinuses, the pericardial sinus, the perivisceral sinus, and the perineural sinus, which are each separated by the presence of two fibromuscular diaphragms. The dorsal vessel lies within the pericardial sinus and extends longitudinally through the body along the dorsal wall, where it acts as the primary pump for haemolymph. It is the only vessel possessed by insects, and its form is relatively simple a tube composed of a single layer of myocardial tissue. It can be defined by two parts, the anterior section or aorta, which passes the cerebral ganglion and ends in the head, and the posterior section, which is also termed the heart. This part is restricted to the abdomen in most insect orders. Within the dorsal vessel are ostia, which are small openings that enable the entry of hemolymph into the dorsal vessel itself. Ostia are most commonly found in the posterior section and are normally paired laterally on either side of the vessel. Most insects possess between 2 to 5 pairs of ostia, but some orders such as Orthoptera can have up to 12 pairs. In some orders such as Diptera, the margins of laterally positioned ostia fused to the vessel tissue form valve-like chamber formations which prevent backflow of haemolymph. In order to create flow of haemolymph around the haemocell, Allery muscles of the dorsal diaphragm and myocardium undergo peristaltic contractions. These are wave-like contractions that occur from the posterior end. This creates a contraction frequency between 14 and 150 beats per minute, which forces the haemolymph within the dorsal vessel forward for each chamber towards the anterior end. Haemolymph then exits the dorsal vessel and fills the haemocell at the head of the insect. Contractions of the ventral diaphragm, a second fibromuscular structure that lines the floor of the body cavity and covers the nerve cord, aids the posterior directed flow of the haemolymph within the haemocell. This supplies vital organs before returning to the pericardial sinus region and the dorsal vessel. In some insects, it is also common for there to be periodic reversal of flow in the dorsal vessel. The flow of haemolymph is assisted by additional pumps, also known as accessory pulsatile organs. These are usually located at the base or within appendages, which pump independently from that of the dorsal vessel. This enables the flow of haemolymph into major appendages such as the antennae and wings. The antennae contains vessels with ampullary enlargements which possess elastic properties within their walls. These interact with associated muscles for the dilation and compression of vessels to help pump haemolymph into the antennae. The wings also have accessory organs located in the thorax. These aspirate haemolymph from the posterior veins of the wings, thereby forcing the movement of haemolymph into the anterior veins of the wings. This is further aided by the exoskeleton's raised portions creating pumping space, acting as a pump to draw haemolymph from the posterior wing veins back into the body. Haemolymph, the circulatory medium, distributes molecules such as nutrients and hormones that are necessary for vital chemical processes throughout the body, as well as waste products to the excretory organs. It also plays a role in the coordination of defence and, less directly, thermoregulation. It may be seen as analogous to vertebrate blood, but haemolymph is not the main transport mechanism for oxygen in insects. The absence of haemoglobin gives a colourless appearance and characterises its minimal oxygen carrying capacity. Some insects may, however, have coloured haemolymph due to diet or blue pigmentation from the presence of haemocyanin, a pigment with minor oxygen carrying ability found in some insects, such as stoneflies. 
Plasma is the main constituent of hemolymph, and being approximately 90% water, it is an important reserve against desiccation. Under particularly harsh conditions, the hemolymph can become more concentrated and increase viscosity. The remaining 10% of plasma consists of compounds such as hormones, ions, proteins, sugars, and waste products. These are transported in and out of the hemolymph as required upon direct contact with the relevant body cells. The other component of hemolymph is hemocyte cells, which are suspended in the plasma. They play the leading role in insect immunity against harmful pathogens. Their functions in defence are phagocytosis, which acts as a line of defence in engulfing small foreign bodies, such as harmful viruses and bacteria. Encapsulation, where hemocytes conform to an adhesive state, group together and surround larger foreign invaders, such as parasites, to isolate them. And hemolymph coagulation. Hemocytes adhere to sites of injury to seal wounds. This prevents hemolymph loss from the body and stops the entry of pathogens. Hemocytes also play a key role in the storage of nutrients for transportation. Hemolymph can also have a role in the external defence in some orders. Reflex bleeding, for example, is a process where hemolymph is secreted through the pores in the cuticle. This is caused by raised internal hydrostatic pressure from the contraction of muscles. Substances which alter the taste, odour or toxicity of hemolymph are dissolved within, acting as a repellent to ward off predators. Many insects with reflex bleeding mechanisms also show aposmatic coloration. Generally, as poikilotherms, insect body temperatures vary with the environment, but some may employ a number of physiological as well as behavioural methods to control temperature. This can involve the circulatory system. In winged insects, flight muscle contraction elevates thoracic temperatures. Hemolymph flow can then be exploited to keep this heat localised. This is done by using countercurrent flow, where heated extracardiac hemolymph moving towards the posterior thorax transfers heat to cooler hemolymph in the dorsal vessel. This maintains higher temperatures in the thorax than the abdomen, where vital organs are kept. When thoracic temperatures are too high, a drop in contraction rate from the heart will cause this heat to dissipate between the thorax and the abdomen. The circulatory system and gas exchange system has co-evolved in insects. It is believed that hexapods evolved from marine arthropods that used gills to respire. As they became terrestrial, the tracheal system evolved. As tracheal volume increased, hexapods experienced a reduction in the circulatory system to the simpler one we see today. This decrease in hemolymph volume is a key innovation, which is also parallel with the increase in tracheal volume. This has allowed for insects to be lighter, a key trait selected for flying. This evolutionary change is also reflected in life history. For example, the hemolymph volume can account for up to 50% of the body weight of a caterpillar, but only 15% of the body weight of a butterfly. Okay, so we hope you've been listening. Time for a cahoot.